Hi everyone, Six String Supplies. Now today we're going to be doing uh, a video showing you how to wire a jazz bass. No thrills, just the standard stock jazz bass wiring. Um, this is actually a first for us because every video we've done so far has been related to uh, electric guitars. Um, so today we're doing bass. Uh, it's your classic jazz bass. As usual, at the very beginning of our videos we'll always do a quick overview of the components used. Um, what, what we're going to be using in the in the uh, setup, excuse me, I'll get my words out. Uh, right then, so first off here we've got three of these CTS Solid Shaft 250k audio pots. Uh, typically used on a Telecaster. Uh, they've all been matched on the multimeter to within a tolerance of about 5-6%. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about tolerances to be honest. Pots are made to a tolerance of 20% with good reason. You're not going to hear an audible difference between 250k and 280k, to be honest. And even then, I think that's a stretch. Uh, we're going to be using a Switchcraft jack socket, quarter inch mono. Uh, I'm sure I've told this story a few times, but Switchcraft are the the industry standard and have been since. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the late 40s, early 50s, when a certain Mr. Leo Fender approached Switchcraft about using jacks in his uh, up-and-coming guitar brand. The rest is history. Uh, we're going to be using uh, black and yellow cloth wire. Use whatever colours you need. Um, you don't actually need as much as I've got here to be honest, but you, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, I've got a paper and oil capacitor, 0 0.047. We're going to be putting that in there. Um, again, you know that we love using heat shrink tubing. So we've got three and a half mil diameter here. That is quite simply just to cover the terminals on the jack socket. And the yellow is for the capacitor. I might actually use it on the ground wire. Um, if you see the ground wire, you can either use the black cloth wire in here, or the yellow, whatever takes you fancy. Um, but we're going to be using tinned copper. Uh, get some of this on eBay. We sell this on the website, of course. Um, but if you're looking for a bulk quantity, get it on eBay, to be honest. Uh, right, now actually the customer has ordered a fully loaded jazz bass control plate. Um, so that's the electronics discussed, now we're going to move on. Basically it's going to be a, a jazz bass harness loaded into a control plate here. Now this control plate um, is nickel, nickel plated steel in fact, it's not pure nickel by any means. Um, fender, fender dimensions. This is top grade, this is, this is nickel, like I say, if you want to get a chrome, which does look exactly the same, um, you can definitely get them on eBay for about five quid. Um, we use nickel just because it's it's a, uh, it's all about quality. And to be honest, a lot of people, myself included, like the way how it develops a natural patina over time. And um, some jazz bass screw fit control knobs there. So you've got your two uh, your two volumes and your tone control. Okay, so that's that done. We're going to load this into there, and then we're going to wire it up, and we'll show you how. Okay, so that's all loaded in the control plate. Um, I have actually just taken the control knobs off. I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, we'll put them on at the end. Uh, right now, I hope the light's not reflecting too much, but I've got the three pots all facing in the same direction, down towards the jack. Now, I'm going to have my ground wire running down this side. So for that reason, I've got the ground lug of the jack. The ground is the inner ring here, facing that way. If you want your ground wire on the other side, just turn your jack around. Right, and the reason I'm taking the control knobs off, the only problem when you're wiring guitar or bass circuits with all the components in a line like this, uh, Telecast is another classic, um, unless you're using flat knobs it's really hard to actually get it there, so you can either use a, a template like this, but even then it's still going to wobble around a bit, or nice budget hack here, use a roll of sellotape and squeeze it in like that. There you go, it sits nice and flushly, just about, and it makes it a lot easier for you to do what you need to do. Right then, so we're going to start off as always, if you've watched our videos you know we're a bit mad about this. Um, we're going to be doing some tinning and grounding a few of the lugs that aren't going to be used. Um, so the, we'll have the wiring diagram on the video, the link, it's on our website, the link to that uh, wiring diagram is in the description below the video, uh, but in the meantime, the, we'll just talk you through it actually here. Similar to a Stratocaster or a Telecaster, this knob here on the volume control 
needs to be grounded to the back of the pot and the same for the second volume control. So this one and this one we're going to be grounding to the back so we're going to fill these terminals completely with solder. You can of course just use a single wire running from the terminal to the back of the pot and ground it that way. Uh, works absolutely fine, it's probably a lot easier actually um, depending on the solar equipment you've got. Uh, we just bend them back in as habit, which is something we've always done. Right then, so in terms of tinning, take your wiring diagram and you're going to tin every part, every terminal that has a connection on it. So that's going to be these first two here. Same again on the tone control, on the volume control, excuse me. And on the tone control, we're going to be having uh, the middle lug here, which is going to be the output to the jack. And this one is actually where we're going to put our capacitor. But uh, we'll just tin them all now. So like I say, use your diagram for reference. If I can turn that to the right angle. There we are, a nice view there of all the terminals. This terminal and this terminal we need to ground to the back of the pot. So we're going to fill them with solder now. I apologise to any Americans watching. Um, we do call it solder in the UK. I believe you call it solder, even that spout solder. Uh, it's just the way it is, isn't it? So I'm just holding my soldering iron behind the terminal and I'm just filling the whole eyelet with solder. Oh, excuse me. Okay, we'll let them cool before we ground them. Now, in terms of turning the others, very similar technique, I'll try and give you a a nice bird's eye view there. So you hold your soldering iron behind the the, the eyelet there, and that heat, as it's transferred, will heat up the eyelet sufficiently to just feed solder onto the metal. So you don't actually want to be touching the soldering iron with your solder. And you just literally put a tiny little coating on to the terminal. That just makes it a bit easier. Well, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, when you actually come to make your connection. So the same on these ones. The middle terminal here. I'm just flowing the the solder around the ring. And on the tone control, you can get a better view there. We're doing the middle, which is going to be the output to the jack. And this capacitor here is, uh, this terminal here, excuse me, is where we're going to put our tone capacitor. So I'll just give them a tin as well. It doesn't matter actually if you accidentally fill up the whole eyelet like I have on these two, even though that's for a reason. Because um, all you've got to do is heat it up and feed your wire through. Uh, I'm just going to be doing the same to the lugs on the, the terminals on the jack. Uh, they're a bit thicker, so they might take a little bit longer, but just a tiny bit around the eyelet, just to make it all easier when it comes to making that final connection later. Okay. So that's all the tinning done. Now we're just going to ground these two terminals here of the both the volume control. And now, like I say, you can do this uh, in two ways mainly. You can either have a snippet of wire connecting uh, between the terminal and the and then soldering the other end to the the back of the pot. That works fine. It's actually a very popular way of doing it. Or alternatively, you can bend the terminal back up against the pot casing. Just like that, and you've got to create a bridge between the terminal and the back of the pot. So you hold your soldering iron in place to heat it up. It really doesn't take long actually. Just feed in a little bit of solder. And there you go, if you can see that, there's a nice shiny joint to bridge in between the two. And that grounds that terminal effectively. So we'll just do the same on this one.
there you are. Now we're also going to, in preparation for the ground wire, because so we're going to have a ground wire running, connecting the three pots together, and then running to the ground terminal of the jack, so you need to, it uh, doesn't have to be continuous actually, a wire running from here, to here, to here, to here. Now you can use, uh, with our wiring kit we give you black cloth wire, or cream or yellow, use whatever you fancy. Um, but in preparation for laying down the ground wire, we're going to be tinning the side of the pots here. So when you're tinning, you just heat up the area, feed in your solder, spread a puddle around. Same on the middle pot. Let's make sure they're in line actually. There you go. So that's all the tinning done. Um, eight minutes long, that bit of tinning session, but to be fair, it does make it a lot easier earlier on. A lot of people find it boring, but um, I definitely recommend it, to be honest. Um, so there you go. As you can see, we've got those three shiny puddles of sold on the side of the pots. So we're gonna, have a, we're gonna lay down a ground wire using tin copper or cloth wire, whatever you prefer. And we're gonna have a wire connecting the three pots together. I'm only going to have the wire connecting the three pots because I'm then going to use a bit of cloth wire connecting that pot to the ground lugger there. Um, so when you come back, they'll have a ground wire down and then we'll actually move on to wiring the rest of the circuit. Right then, so just to show you what's changed, we've just added the ground wire here. It's a continuous length of tinned copper uh, connecting the three pots together and in between each connection I've just put in a, a little bit of rubber tubing there. Um, so that was done off camera simply because it's very awkward and it'd be very awkward viewing and filming uh, putting that onto the side of the pots. However, you'll notice that we've left, we haven't yet connected the ground to the jack. That's because we're going to be using cloth wire and we'll be doing that in a bit. Um, right then, so with the essentials done, it's now time to actually wire the, the main controls. So to do this, we're going to be using yellow cloth wire. Use what you want, of course. Use yellow or cream or black or whatever you want. And we're just going to, the first connection, we need to connect the input here of the volume control. I'll give you a bird's eye. This terminal here is getting connected to this terminal here. And then this terminal here is going to be connected to the output of the tone control here. So. We're going to have a bit of cloth wire running from here to here. That's your two volume controls. And then from your volume control to the middle terminal here of the tone control, which is the output. So, just going to start connecting them. Um, there's a few ways of doing this, and a lot of people have their different techniques. Basically, we wire our harnesses on the assumption that you're not going to try and mod or change them later. Um, the reason being is the idea of soldering, right, you need to make a mechanical connection before you make the electrical connection. Because if you have a poor mechanical connection and then the solder joint, you know, weakens over time, it's just, it's going to fail the whole thing. So that's why you'll see a lot of people, and myself included, do, I do it from time to time anyway. They'll have the wire in the, into the terminal like that, and then they'll solder it in place, which is fine. Um, it's very good if you plan on making changes at a later date. But what, ideally, what you want to do is make the mechanical connection first. So that's wrapping the wire around. Then soldering that in place. So I've wrapped the wires around the terminal and then I'm going to solder. And 
I'm just going to push that cloth back down. There we go. And same again. <clears throat> now this one I am going to be a bit hypocritical. <laughs> I'm only going to poke the wire through because I need to have another wire coming from the same joint. So we'll put both of those wires through there. And then we're gonna make that connection with this holding line. So similar to the way you tinned them earlier actually, if you hold your soldering iron behind the, the terminal and feed your solder on from the other side. Oh, my hand is in the way. There we go, I'll do that again. So soldering iron behind the connection and feed your solder from the other side. Because the heat that's generated from your soldering iron will transfer through the solder that's already on the tip and onto the terminal so you can apply your solder from the other side and it should flow nicely. Okay, so that's the two volume controls done. Just gonna snip that. Okay, and then this wire that's coming from the volume control here needs to go to the middle lug here, middle terminal of the output to the jack. But again, before we actually solder that one into place, because you, this is, as I've just said, the output to the jack, we need to have another wire. Running from this terminal to the jack socket. So I'm just taking another another piece of wire. And now this, I'm actually going to show you what we're using rubber tubing for here. But this wire is going through, I'll show you actually. This terminal here for the jack. Now as I said, this terminal with the inner ring is the ground. So we're going to have a wire from here, which is the hot, to the middle terminal of the tone control with that wire, and we'll solder that in place. But just before we do that, this is actually uh, where we use our rubber tubing quite a lot. So you push your cloth back. Feed the wire through. Oh, excuse me. So I'm heating the, as everything else, I'm heating it behind the joint. I'm just flowing my solder in from the other side. And if you've tinned it nicely earlier, it will flow very easily indeed. Let that cool naturally. Push your cloth back down. Right now, if you're using it, take a little snippet of heat shrink tubing. Thread it all the way down to the cover in the jack socket and use a, a heat gun or a lighter if you're a cheapskate like myself. Did buy a heat gun actually. It cost me 12 quid from home base and it died not long after. 
suppose you get what you pay for, don't you? Right then. Now, the reason why we do that is just gives it a bit more protection on the uh, particular lugs. Um, there's enough space inside your control cavity anyway, so it's not really... I wouldn't say it should be top of your agenda, but hey. And then the this wire you've just put into the jack, the other end of it needs to go to the middle terminal of the tank controller, also known as the output to the jack. So I'm just going to cut that to length. Push your cloth back. Feed it through. And then solder that in place. So same as every other connection you've done, hold the soldering iron behind the joint, or does that have to be all to the side? Sorry, move that wire. Feed in your solder. Let that cool naturally. Tidy up a little bit. If you're pedantic like me. There you go, so that's the main control. Oh, sorry, I just stopped doing that. That's the main controls done. You're just connecting the input of the volume to the input of the volume to the output on the tone control, and that goes to the jack. Now all we've got to do is connect the ground, um, ground the jack to the pot casing here, I'll do it to the side, and then add your tone capacitor. Okay, so we're just going to ground the jack, so it's exactly the same principle as we did on this one here. We're going to put the black cloth wire into the ground lug of the jack. We're then going to solder it in place, and we're going to cover it with some rubber tubing. Just as we did earlier. There you go, let it cool naturally. Snip it a tubing. Or push the cloth back down first actually, always. Put your tubing on. And then again, shrink that tubing down. Doesn't matter if you're using a lighter or a heat gun. If you're really skilled, you can use the heat from the soldering iron. But it takes ages. Right then. So once you've done that, we then just got to ground this cloth wire to the side of the pot. Now I actually try and get it into this puddle of solder here. I don't like having too many joints. So we're going to get that in there. So we're going to cut that to size. Push your cloth back. Now this is actually going to be a lot easier if you tin your wire beforehand. So I hope you can see that, you can just about. So if you're tinning a wire like this, you hold your soldering iron underneath it and then you flow a little bit of solder on from the top and it should flow all the way down. But it really doesn't take much and we don't need much. But we're going to try and get this into the puddle on the side. Just like that. Actually, it's way too long.
So I'm just going to do that again. Forgive me. Right, so tin it again. Sorry, I've just cut it down because it's a little bit too long. Right, so as you can see, I've got that in there and I'm gonna apply my heat and get it into that joint there. Um, you should be able to see this, but... There you go. So that's my ground wire basically, that's your ground circuit running, connecting all the three pots together and then going to the ground leg of the track. Now to complete the ground obviously when you do put this into your bass guitar and you've attached your pickups you need to have the ground wire running from the bridge normally to the back of one of the pots. Generally people put it to this one but you might put it to this one or that one if you've got your pickups coming in as well. Uh, your pickups Pickups are going to the middle lug of the volumes, so your neck pickup goes to the neck volume control, the middle terminal here, and the other pickup, the, I guess you call it a bridge pickup when you in a bass, is going to the middle terminal here of the second volume control. Now the final thing we need to do is just add our tone capacitor, excuse me, I need to stop knocking this camera. Now the tone cap one end is going to get connected to this terminal here of the tone control and the other end we're going to ground uh, so I tend to pop it on the side of the pot here but we'll have a go at that um, so that's what the yellow tubing has been used for just to protect the capacitor lead so I'll put that in there make it all position it nicely solder that into place Again, I'm coming in behind, we I'm just filling that up nice and quick and easy. Just gonna snip that a tiny bit. There you go, and the final, the other end of the capacitor, we're gonna solder. Let's just have a quick look. Excuse me again. Yeah, we're going to pop it in there. So I'm just going to tin that side of the pot gently. Very nice, so then we're just going to hold the soldering iron up against that. So just give it a quick tin because it's starting to look a bit oxidised. Hold the soldering iron in place. And feed in your solder.
All good. All done. That's how you wire up a jazz bass harness. So like I say, you put this into your jazz bass, uh, you connect your pickups to the middle terminals here, of the volume controls. So neck, bridge, you have your ground running from the bridge, you obviously ground the back of your, um, ground your pickups as well to the back of the pots. And there you go. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate to comment below. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Thank you.